Drawing faces is probably one of the most common reasons why someone would start drawing, yet it is also one of the most difficult things to do well. In this video I'm going to demonstrate to you what makes drawing faces so hard and how can you improve your skills to get better at drawing them. Last time when we talked about portraits, we discussed the difference between realistic drawings and stylized drawings of faces. This time I would like to concentrate on why is it so difficult to draw faces. So if you are new and you would like to learn how to draw faces, I'm going to cover quite a lot in this tutorial and I really want to make it encouraging for you to get started. I used Milanote to build this board and Milanote is actually sponsoring this video. It's a brilliant tool for organizing everything from imagery to text into one place and you can try it out for free. You just have to go to milanote.com slash yes I'm a designer or click on the link in the description below. First I would like to show you a really cool resource where you can find inspiration and also things to draw and it is Pinterest. Now you might be familiar that on Pinterest whenever there is an image you can actually do something they call a try which means that if it's let's say a person whether it's a photograph or an illustration you can attempt to recreate it. So draw it yourself whether it's on paper or digitally you can upload it as a try. Now this is one of the examples that I found. This is art by an artist called Ailey. I think that's how it's pronounced. And you can find this artist on Facebook. But the main reason why I'm showing this is that we can see the original drawing on the left and then we can see a few of the tries on Pinterest. Now I intentionally chose few good ones and some not as good ones but generally the reason I put them together and so you can see it both the original and the redraws is to explain that there is actually no bad drawings because every drawing is unique. And if your aim is to recreate exactly the original drawing, that's not really a good goal because then you could just simply trace it over or just scan it in and print it out. Whenever you draw something, the most important thing is to do your own take. So you have to create something slightly unique at least. So in that aspect, I would say this one here is just as good as any of these other ones. But of course, if the aim is to get it closer or as close as possible to the original or the reference, then I would say this obviously is going to win. Now it's also very important to remember that everyone starts somewhere. So no one will be able to draw like this straight away. Whenever you see an artist that you admire, they probably went through hours and hours of practice and copying references before they got to that skill level that you are familiar with. So is it a good idea to copy? Well, of course it is because drawing is all about observation. So the better you get at observing details and trying to recreate them in your drawing, the better you will be in drawing in general. And whether your reference is a photograph or a drawing, it doesn't really matter because you will be able to pick up things from either of them. When you look at an actual photograph and then try to find something quite similar to this drawing here, you will be able to see more details and if you are aiming for photorealistic drawings then obviously this is a better reference. But you might find it more difficult, especially if you are just starting out, because you will have to decipher the photograph. There's so much subtle details that you might not even notice. So when I zoom closer you won't really see much structure of the face because it's all very soft and blended together. So you have to interpret photographs while drawings obviously are a bit clearer because they are just most of them are line drawings. So you might find it easier to copy and practice with existing drawings that you like but also don't forget to use photo references once in a while. So I would say a mixture of both is good. And another important thing I wanted to mention and this is something I discussed in more detail in the previous video and if you haven't seen it the link is in the description below is that whenever you are doing drawings 
It is just like what I said at the beginning of this tutorial, you are not trying to recreate something exactly. And that's when it comes to stylized drawings or cartoon-like caricatures even. So there will be exaggerations, like the size of the eyes in this case is obviously not like realistic eyes. But we can look at another set of images as well. And this is from another artist called Cameron Mark. Again, you can find the artist on Instagram. Again, I included a similar shot and a similar characteristic face. And also then we can see the tries next to it here on the right. And again, on this example, you can see that there is exaggeration on the size of the eye clearly. And even the position of the nose is quite low and the bridge of the nose is really nice and round. So it has that nice S curve, which you can see on some people. But again, this is slightly exaggerated or stylized. So again, you can ask whether it's better to practice copying stylized drawings or whether to recreate the actual realistic proportions of the face. Well, again, both of these are good practice. Again, it's all about observation. So by doing stylized drawings, you will improve. And by doing realistic drawings, you will also improve. It's similar to sports when you do one kind of sport. It won't really harm your performance in the other one. It's actually going to, most of the time, improve it. Or like with instruments, when you learn multiple instruments, you will get better in both because generally your understanding of playing music improves. So looking at the tries in this case, again, I put probably the closest one to the original up here. And then we have less successful ones. But again, these are not bad drawings, as I said. They can be more abstract or they can be just simply someone's really young who hasn't developed the observation skills yet. But you have to start somewhere. So if you draw something like this or worse in a way, it's still fine because that's going to take you to the next level. So each drawing you do is just one step towards getting really good at drawing like these artists. And even though I've been drawing for more than 20 years, I still sit down and practice and copy other artists. Again, not tracing over it because that doesn't really develop the skill. It doesn't make your brain work. It might be relaxing, but you don't actually achieve much with it. But you can see here, I created this quick time lapse. I can show you how I've done this drawing. So I was using the reference on the left because I'm right-handed. I just put it on the left and then I was drawing on the right of it. And you can see that I start usually with the shapes that makes up the face. I will talk a little bit more about that soon. And then I would just basically copy what I see on the left. And I try to observe my reference and I try to recreate it as close as possible. But at the same time, I don't mind changing some details. So the end result doesn't have to be exactly as the original. So yeah, you can see how it turned out. It is very similar to the original, but still different. And I don't mind that. So again, remember, whenever you use a reference, that is just for reference. You don't have to exactly recreate it. Try to take as much out of practicing by drawing it again, but don't be too harsh on yourself because that's going to prevent you from improving. So instead of struggling on one drawing for hours, maybe do several of them, not the same drawing, try a couple of different ones. And it's going to be more enjoyable as well, but believe me, you will develop your skills faster. And to come back to the first question I asked, why is it drawing faces so difficult? I have a few things here that I'm going to go through, which shows just how many things you need to understand before you can actually start drawing faces confidently. It is actually a very complicated structure, the human face or human head. You have to understand things like the skull, which is the underlying structure of the head, then how the muscles work in the face. And then you also have to understand things like perspective, foreshortening, which means that when I turn my face, it's going to be completely different from every angle. So again, you have to be able to think in three dimensions. You have to know the proportions where things need to go. And 
if anything is a little bit off, viewers will be able to tell because we are very experienced in knowing the human face's anatomy. Even when you're not studying it, it's something that you just see constantly. So when you are newborn, when you're a baby first opening your eyes, you get used to seeing your parents first. So it's the first thing that you observe as a human being. And it is something that we have to be good at because we need to be able to understand people simply by just looking at them and understanding and reading their expressions. But coming back to the examples I wanted to show you, you can see that there are measurements that you can learn. And I usually say these are very useful guidelines, but you shouldn't, again, focus too much on them. Instead, try to observe things. And once you observe and practice, then looking at things like these will help you to understand why certain things are already working in your drawing and why some things are still off. So don't start practicing with these references because they are too complicated to begin with. But I'm still going to go through these because it will be a good visual reference even if you just vaguely remember them next time when you start drawing faces. So the first thing to remember is the skull is probably easiest to represent with a sphere and then shapes added onto that. So when we look at it from the side you can see that you can start with a circle and then this rectangular shape added for the jaw and the lower part of the face. So usually that's the construction of the face and that is something you can also do from the front. The only thing is that from the front it's good to imagine chopping off two slices of that sphere. So it's not like a perfect ball, you would have to chop the sides off. So that's like a plane here on both sides that you need to remember. And that's just the basic structure there's lots of other construction lines you can learn and of course it gets more complicated when you look at it from the side so again we can see that chopped off slice on the side and then here we can actually see how these lines are coming to the center so the chin is actually much narrower than where the jaw connects into the skull and these points that we can see under the skin we normally call landmarks and that applies to the body as well when you're drawing the full body anatomy. Landmarks are visible bones like the collarbone, for example, that you can use as a reference to find the proportions and the posture of the body. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe certified online training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com memberships and start your free trial today. And now, let's head back to the tutorial. Then moving on, we can see another image of the proportions of the features on the face. And these are obviously very standardized numbers, so it's not going to apply to everyone's faces, but in general, they work. And one of the simple ones to remember is that if you look at someone's face from the front, the eyes would take two thirds of the face width and then you would have another eyes width in between. And then you can also find lines like from the eyes to the top of the forehead is one third and the same one third is from the top of the eyes to the bottom of the nose and then from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. But as I said, these are really just guidelines, so you shouldn't always strictly follow them. But generally, once you remember this structure, it's going to help you to see these shapes on faces. And here's a good example where we can see that sphere chopped off on the sides and then we can see in whatever angle we have to draw faces we can always find that sphere and that can be a good way of trying to understand the three-dimensional form so even here we have these construction lines and the basic measurements or division lines for the thirds 
Again, we can see the same face from all kinds of different angles, but you can see that generally the same shape can be found in all of them. And then another thing that I really found useful when I was learning to draw people is to think of geometric shapes or almost like a simplified polygon on the face where we can see everything is made up of smaller elements. Like the nose is also constructed of planes and these geometric shapes. And you just have to draw those first to then be able to refine it into that smooth structure that we see because of the skin. Because the skin is really just covering up all that very sharp structure that we have underneath. Like the tip of the nose is actually from the skull. And we can see that really well here. It's a bit scary example, but very useful that all of this is not really bone. So the bone ends there. And some people like myself, I have a very sharp tip here so I can touch that and that is a very good landmark point again that you can remember and even when someone has a very soft nose it's still good to know where the bone ends it's going to help your drawing to improve so even though you are drawing those soft skin details as long as you understand what's underneath both the bones and the muscles you will be able to create the structure that's necessary to create more realistic and more believable faces and last, I wanted to show you a full time lapse again. I'm just going to run this while I'm talking. So you can see I used a reference of Lupita's photo from the cover of this magazine. And this is something I actually started doing while I was on a train journey. I was just bored. So I was again, I put this on the side and I used it as a reference and I was drawing. Now, it took me a couple of hours to do this painting, but generally I wasn't too focused on recreating the exact look. I was using it as a reference and then I simply started playing around and the final result, you might not even be able to tell it is her, but as I said, that wasn't really my aim with it. It's all about practicing. And I was focusing really more on the expression and those landmarks that you can see I'm going to do with the shading, uh, bringing them out. Like on her face, we can really see well the bones underneath here. So these are very useful things to practice and try to recreate them well. So I'm just going to fast forward a bit and you will see I worked on the coloring and then I was just messing around here further refining all the details until I got to the end result. So all I wanted to show with this example again is that you should always feel free to work off from references but then put your personal touch on it and don't ever worry about concentrating too hard recreating exactly the original photograph or drawing. If this tutorial inspired you, please don't forget to leave a comment and like the video. But also, if you draw a face and you would like us to take a look at it, make sure you tag us with hashtag yes, I'm a designer. Wherever you should post it, as long as you have the hashtag, we will be able to take a look at it and also share it on our own channels. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.